Watch you guys, got another video on how to clone your M.2 drive to an M.2 drive here. So if you've got an NVMe drive like this one, and uh, it's a, say, a one terabyte, and you've only got, say, for instance, a 250 uh, gigabyte in there, and you want to upgrade it to a newer drive, then you can do if your motherboard supports two M.2 slots like this one. Unfortunately, not all motherboards have two slots on them, but there is a way around it where you can clone from one to another, and I'll show you how to do it in this video. So assuming that you've got one drive already with your Windows operating system on it, and now you want to put another NVMe drive in, I'll show you how to do that. Now, this is a riser card, and basically this is a PCI Express 3.0 times 4 to NVMe uh, type card. And it also supports SATA ones as well. So if this is an NVMe uh, drive here, you can slot it in the correct one here. And of course, you've already got one on the motherboard, assuming that you've only got one slot on your board, you can use something like this and plug it into the PCI Express slot. And basically what that will do is clone it to that uh, drive there. That's if you've only got one slot on the motherboard. This board does have two slots, so we don't need to use this. It also has the SATA version here, just in case you're going from SATA to SATA, you can still use something like this to clone from a SATA type M.2 drive to another one. If you don't want to use the riser card, you can use something like this, which is basically a USB to type C connector and you put the drive inside here. It will show up as a USB drive inside a Cronus or whatever software you're using and you would clone to that drive there. This will then become your main drive. You take it back out and put it into the main slot and everything should be good. So what I'm going to do here first is put the drive into the second slot here. But if you haven't got a slot, obviously you'd use one of those other methods and you can skip this installation part here and then you can move on to the cloning stage. I'll explain that a little bit more in detail once we get to that stage of the video. So basically, I'm going to remove the little cover here on the M.2 slot for the second drive and we're going to remove this. And all this is is just a little plate with a little pad on it that covers the drive up and keeps the drive cool because it does have a thermal pad on the bottom here. This one's not been in use, so the thermal pad hasn't had the sticker removed, which means it's uh, still not been used here. So let's go ahead and uh, get the drive in. So you can see now the slot is available here, and I can now offer this drive up to the board and screw it down, just as you would have done with your first drive. Once we've done that, we can put the plate back on and screw this all down and we're now ready to start cloning our drive. Now, once this cloning process is completed, you would then remove this plate again, take the drive out, and replace your original drive, which would be in the slot one, and put your new clone drive in there. So this is a Cronus. We're going to create our bootable media here. So go into Tools and Rescue Media. Go in here, and you've got a couple of options. You've got your simple mode, which will basically do it for you, or you've got your advanced mode, depending on how advanced you are with this stuff. So let's take a look at the options that we have available. So inside here, you can see we've got WinPE based media, or you've got the Linux based media. You can still use either one of these. The architecture is going to be 64 bit. You've got the Windows recovery environment, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, and Windows 10 download, Windows ADK to create your Acronis bootable media. And then you've got your Windows 7 version there. Going back, we just go back here and take a look at this version here. Inside here, what you would do is select the USB flash drive that you've got plugged into your computer. And then what you can do is click on proceed and it will create that bootable media for you so we can boot to that and still clone our drive using their software. Now, I've been using Acronis for many, many years and it's a very good piece of software. And you can see here, We've got our USB flash drive plugged in here, and this will proceed and copy all the files over that is needed for our uh, bootable media. So let's go back here, and I'm just going to click on the Linux based here or the Windows PE uh, based. And this is if you want to go down this route and choose another option available to you. So the way I'm going to do mine is go to the advanced options and then click on Linux based. Uh, bootable media and just go through here and click my USB flash drive and then basically um, 
go and uh, format the selected media and permanently erase all the data and click proceed. And this will create the um, Linux based version. This is still for Windows based systems, but I find this one is probably the best option to use uh, for this. I just prefer the Linux based uh, bootable media rather than the Windows one. So we're going to go ahead and let that create its thing here. It does take a little bit of time, so be patient and let it do its thing. It's just copying all the files over that it needs for the software to work correctly. And that should be done. There we go. A Cronus has, a bootable media has been created successfully. And now we can boot to that media and basically clone our drives that we want to do. So we can close this off. Let me just close this off here. And what I'm going to do is plug this into the computer that I want to clone on. It'll just show you the files inside here. There's all your files on the USB flash drive. And this can be used on any computer. You can uh, clone back up and do any of that stuff with this uh, USB flash drive. So let me go ahead and go to the BIOS here. And what we're going to do is quickly go over to the BIOS and take a look and go to the NVMe section here. And just to see whether the both of the drives are detected, we can now see that we've got our WDC, which is our Western Digital NVMe drive, and our Samsung SSD uh, 970 Evo one terabyte is in there as well. All I need to do here is make sure that my USB flash drive is plugged in with my um, Acronis on it, and I'm going to select this as my first boot option here. Now, once that's done, I can click F10 and save those options and a boot to that USB flash drive and then change that once I've completed my cloning. So now it's going to boot to the USB flash drive and you can see a Cronus is now starting to load up. You will see uh, some Linux stuff going there, but don't worry about that. That's just the actual uh, method that I chose to make my bootable media. And uh, once that's loaded up, you should then see the Cronus menu here. There we go. So here is our Cronus menu. Welcome to a Cronus True Image. We can back up, recover, do all that sort of stuff here. But I'm going to go up to Tools and Utilities here. Inside Tools and Utilities, you should see the Clone Disk option. So click on Clone Disk. And now we've got the option to choose a clone mode. Automatic is recommended. All your partitions from the source hard drive will be copied to the target disk in a few simple steps and your new hard disk will be made bootable. Your existing partitions will be automatically resized to fit the target hard disk. So if you're upgrading from a small from a small drive to a bigger drive, it will take care of all that for you and that's what we're going to do. So what I need to do here is select my source drive here. So now we need to select our source drive or source disk. In this case, this will be our original disk that we've got in the PC at the moment, which we are using. And this will be the one that we're going to be replacing. So we need to select this one. In my case, it's an NVMe drive. It's a Western Digital drive. So I'm going to select that. Yours may be something different, but just make sure that you select that drive there. And that will be the one that we're going to be replacing. And it will clone that drive to our new drive. So click Next. And then we can click on our destination disk, which is going to be our brand new uh, replacement drive. In my case, it's a Samsung SSD 970 Evo one terabyte. Yours may be different and yours also uh, may be that USB one that we was talking about. If you're using the USB uh, drive method, it will come up as a USB drive. You would select that because that has got your NVMe uh, drive inside there and it will clone it to that and you can then take it out of there and put it into your number one slot. Select the required cloning method to replace a drive or disk on this machine, clone with the bootable operating system, or you've got to use as a data disk or clone as data disk on there. But we're going to select the top one here and then click next. And once we've got that done, we're all ready to go. Now there is an option section here, which will allow you to remove certain stuff from there before you clone, if you wish to do that. And you can click on the option section, which will allow you to go into the drive and remove stuff. I'm just going to proceed with this one, but I'll show you the option section just in case you want to see it and click on this. And there you go. You can now remove or exclude certain folders from that clone 
if that's what you want to do. Once you've done all that, you can now click on proceed and this will then clone. So inside that C drive will be the files that you want to exclude from the cloning method. Click proceed and now it's going to start copying and merging the partitions. This won't take long at all if you're going from NVMe to NVMe. It's very, very fast. As you can see here, it will say restart the computer when the operation, uh, operation is complete or you've got shut down the computer when the operation is complete. And that's basically uh, if you want to walk away and leave it while it's doing that. It doesn't take that long, so I'm going to be just uh, sitting here watching it do its thing. It will speed up towards the end, and it shouldn't take too long. So just to recap, once we've got this cloned, we would shut the computer down, and we would remove uh, both of the drives and put our brand new drive into our number one slot onto our M.2 slot there. That will be replacing our original drive. You could reformat the original drive once you've finished and use that as storage afterwards. But you can see here the disk was fully cloned. Uh, to use the clone drive on your current hardware, turn the computer off, remove the source drive, and turn the computer on. You would obviously put that drive in that place there and then boot the PC up, and you should be good to go. So there's the cloning process finished. And uh, I'll quickly show you here um, to go back into the BIOS so we can take a look and we'll see the drives there. So let's close this off and go back into the BIOS. We can remove that USB flash drive now. Under the boot options here, you can see boot option one has been selected for my Samsung drive. That will be boot option one. Now, if you have removed all the other drives, you won't see any other drives in here, but I've left the other drives in here and uh, you should see the other drive, which is the Western Digital uh, drive there. That's the second option. So it will boot to the Samsung drive uh, first because that's how I've set it up. Uh, but if you've only got one drive left in there, that will be basically your new drive that you see. And there you go. We're at the desktop already. Super fast boot up. And uh, if you look at your disk management here, you can basically see the drives. Because I've left the drives in there, you should see more than one drive. And I'll just quickly show you here. I've left them in the same slots. I've not removed, switched the drives around, but you would obviously switch the drive around. Your main drive would now be disk zero. Okay. I've not done that because obviously I'm keeping that drive in there. I'm just showing you as a tutorial how to do it, but you would basically replace the drive. So let me just quickly show you crystal disk here. And it has selected and booted that drive. You can see it's showing the Western Digital Drive here. Let me just quickly go to disk and select the Samsung disk here. Obviously, you won't need to do this part. It's just showing you that that is the C drive and that's what we've booted to. But obviously, if the other drives are all removed, you'll just see one drive here. And that's basically it. That's how you can clone your M.2 to an M.2 drive. Very simple and easy to do. Whether you want to upgrade or clone an NVMe drive or SSD drive, that's how you can uh, use the same method. It's very simple and easy to do. Now, the software I was using was a Cronus True Image 2021. It's not free, but it's very affordable, and it's probably one of the best cloning software out there and also comes with loads of other features. You can check out my full reviews I've done on the software itself. But again, if you want free options, there are free options available. Let me know in the comments section below whether you want to see a free option video and I'll be happy to make that video for you. Anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. That's basically how you can quickly clone one drive to another or one NVMe drive to another NVMe drive or SSD to SSD, whatever way you want to do it. But basically how you can do it using that method. Very simple and easy to do. Just want to say a big special thanks to all my YouTube members who will join my YouTube members group. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.